Hello everybody. Um, Blue Sound is celebrating 10 years at the leading edge of multi-room high-res music streaming with an update of the brilliant Node, this one here. Now whilst the talk of the town this year has been the entry of Eversolo to the streaming market with their DMP A6, Blue, Sound, Blue Sound's Generation 3 Node is still the one to beat, particularly below £1,000. The Node X is an updated Node that has some key features over the DMP A6. Notably, it has a headphone amplifier that the DMP does not have. However, the Node X does not have a sexy touchscreen, which is a little bit like going into a lightsaber fight without a lightsaber these days. The Node X then is a streaming DAC with a pre-amplifier capability that is centered in the Blue OS high-res multi-room universe. It has no screen or fancy casing, but it's all the better for that really. It's concentrating on the job in hand of streaming high-res music reliably, instantly and consistently. So what's new with the Node X? There are a couple of big updates here. There is a new headphone amplifier stage from THX. This is their achromatic audio amplifier. A uh, second new update is, it, is the Node now has a full-size quarter-inch headphone jack. And this is a jumping class from the previous uh, sort of arrangement with the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Significantly, significantly, the Node X has a new ESS Sabre DAC inside it, which is an upgrade on the Generation 3 Node, which was a Burr Brown DAC. This new DAC is the same as the twin DACs in the DMP A6, incidentally, although they're not the Pro version. And as we know, it's not just the DAC chip, but the processing, the power management around it, and that has changed apparently as well. So this Node X Anniversary Edition actually comes in a quite fetching silver, in a silver casing. The casing is silky and not the sticky one from the previous iteration, so that's quite interesting. Finally, there's a remote control with the Node X. Previously, it was an optional extra. But given the Blue OS is so responsive and stable, particularly on my phone, for example, the remote did seem to be a bit unnecessary, as I commented in many of my other reviews. Okay, so the outputs from the DAC are here. There's a subwoofer output here, as well as a digital coaxial output there. There's also an optical output for transport usage. There's an optical input there. Various triggering bits and pieces that we don't really use. The Ethernet inputs there, as well as the USB, which is there. And there's an HDMI arc. There's the power, of course. The Node X gives access to just about everything that you, you would want, including AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect. It has a two-way transmit and receive Bluetooth uh, application with support aptX HD and it's also Rune ready. A full list of music services, including TuneIn Radio, which I use a lot, is on the Blue OS site. MQA is also supported. What is not supported is DSD, as we've mentioned before in our reviews. We should note here also, for hardline audio files out there, the nodes in general only support up to 24 bits and 192 kilohertz processing. Physically, well, what's it like to work with? For me, it just works. I'm on Wi-Fi, my Android phone knows my Blue OS settings, and it just works. At the end of the day, it's a streaming experience, and it's all about quality of the interface. Blue OS is certainly the best interface out there, in my view, maybe with the exception of Room, which for me is quite unaffordable. The remote is lovely, though not really needed if you're on fixed output. Do I really need artwork and VU meters at the front of it? Well, no, not really. With an app this good, um, there's sort of no need for you to have all that, all that fancy stuff. What is the DAC analog output like? Well, with my reference system here with more amps, got a pair of Titan speakers here, the fixed RCA output to the preamplifier is a very nice delivery indeed. It is clean and crisp and there's nothing here to, to disgrace the Nodex. In particular, I detect no treble Sabre glare that sometimes is characterized with the Sabre DAC. And it is indeed the overall clarity and detail 
that I'm looking for, and most of that is here. One of my preferred tracks for listening to detail is Aruj Aftab's Last Night. Here the double bass vibrates the snare drum in the background, and it's a really interesting demonstration of resolution in a hi-fi system. The DAC performance from the node to analog output in a straight comparison to the ever solo DMPA6, in my view, is broadly equivalent. Here we go. As a streamer, digital output into a T plus A DAC 200, I prefer the streaming performance of the Node X to the Ever Solo, principally because of the ease of use and, to be honest, the familiarity of the BlueOS platform. The headphone output is excellent, and the familiar open presentation from the 109s is easily accessible from the Node X. This is quite an upgrade. Similarly, similarly that word, the mid-range is clear and warm and is, real, is a real delight. The remote has more to do here if you prefer it and preferable if you've got fat fingers as I have with the touchpad on the top of the Node X. So what do we conclude? As a streamer, this Node X is a fine performer, both in terms of the serenity of the streaming platform it has, the consistency, the stability, and the immediacy of Blue OS, which I really like. As a DAC with analog output instead, there is a calm and warm delivery that is pleasant over longer periods. You could look out for my YouTube video in the next couple of weeks on the best streamers to buy. But there's no doubt in my mind, however, this is such a fine performer under a thousand pounds. What about the Node X versus the Eversolo DMP? Which one's better? Well, really only you can answer that question. And it comes down to whether you want either a really good headphone amplifier, an excellent streaming infrastructure, or whether you want a fancy screen with VU meters and you want the option of the network server. I love the network server on the Ever Solo, but Blue OS wins for me every time. In summary then, as a streamer, this is an outstanding product. As a DAC, it's as good as you're gonna get for under a thousand pounds in my view. As a headphone amplifier, it's pretty excellent and I really do like it. At this price, if you're looking for a streaming DAC, this should unreservedly be on the top of your audition list. Thank you for watching this video. If you really enjoyed it, please do subscribe. It really helps the channel to grow. Thanks very much.